We love our one pot pasta, but we're gonna make it even better today with juicy homemade meatballs. It's faster and dare I say, it may be even more delicious. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Jude is behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. You know, I cook every single day and I don't mind doing it because I like to have variety. I'm not the type of person who will cook one pot of something and then eat it for the whole entire week because I just, I can't, I just can't. So some weeks are busier than others and some weeks I'm just more tired than others. And so what I do is maybe I will make a larger portion of something earlier during the week and repurpose it in another meal a few days later. Sorry for all the ruckus that's happening back there, but the kittens are like just tearing the place apart while we're trying to film here. So earlier this week, we made meatballs and we ate them Ikea style with gravy and lingonberry sauce and potatoes, that sort of thing. But I had made double the batch because I knew I wanted to make a little bit more so that we could have it later on during the week, but not in the same way. So I've already cooked the meatballs, but you can find the recipe in the card above. And I made a lot because we already ate a dinner out of this. So I'm going to put, I'm not using all of it. So maybe about a pound worth of meatballs, two to three per person, at the bottom of my instant pot. We love our one pot pasta, the one with the Italian sausage, but there's just something about spaghetti and meatballs that makes it more fun. I don't know, I love having the spaghetti and meatballs. We're using about a pound of meatballs. You just want about a layer of meat at the bottom. That's a about a pound, maybe a little bit over. We're using a pound of spaghetti. and we're gonna break it in half. I know there are people who don't like this, but it's the only way I can fit them all in my pot. And we're gonna layer them in here like pickup sticks, for those who remember pickup sticks. You want to make sure that they don't clump, and that's why we're doing it like this. So this is much easier than the regular one pot pasta because I'm not browning anything. The meatballs have already been made. And even making meatballs, you're already like having to mix all that stuff together. It only takes a little bit longer to make a little bit more. So if I were going to freeze those meatballs, I probably would make them a little bit smaller than the ones I've made for today. The ones I made today were quite big. To make them smaller, they'll just cook faster and you can cook them from frozen. But you know, I can't be bothered with that because that's planning way too far in advance. Okay, just using a jar of your favorite sauce and pouring that right on top of the pasta. So I am adding just a few more flavors to our sauce. One teaspoon of oregano. I'm just gonna sprinkle this right on top of the sauce one teaspoon of basil, one teaspoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay, I'm gonna use beef broth, but since I don't have it already made, I am using a tablespoon of this beef better than bouillon. I'm gonna stick it in my empty pasta jar and I'm going to add some warm boiled water because I know I need a jar of liquid in addition to my pasta sauce. And if you don't have beef broth, you can just use water. Just going to stir this up. Make sure it dissolves. And then this way, you're not wasting anything. Or you can just put the lid on and just get every little bit of that tomato sauce. Okay, and then we're just gonna pour this down one side, not to disturb the rest of the sauce on top. The 
The reason why we leave the tomato sauce on top is because the sugars of the tomato sauce will often burn at the bottom of the pot, which then you end up with this like overheating burn um, message on your Instant Pot, and that's not good, right? So we keep the liquid on the bottom, which will create the steam to pressurize the pressure cooker, and everything else will just like meld downwards as it cooks and it'll just all come together at the end. Okay, putting the lid on, locking into place, making sure the ceiling knob is on ceiling. And we're cooking for four minutes on high pressure. Depending on the pasta that you're using, well, I'm using spaghetti, and it takes eight to nine minutes to cook on the stove. You wanna cook it for half that time. Whoa, Flo, that's a serious piece of cheese. And the thing is, you guys eat it all. Like this is not even like a third of it. Since because dinner was so easy to make today, we can grate some cheese. I'm just using Parmigiano. Actually, I think it's Parmigiano Reggiano. All right, that's all you get. My hands are tired. All right. After it's finished cooking, make sure to quick release. So you don't want that pasta to overcook. And you will find that with the spaghetti that there are some strands that look uncooked on the side. So what we're gonna do is just give this a good stir and let it sit for one more minute. And those strands of pasta will cook right through. It smells so good. Well, especially with those added spices that you incorporated into the recipe. Mm-hmm. You guys don't have to do that if you guys are in a hurry or don't want to. It's not a requirement. Okay, we're just gonna let that sit for a minute. All right, does that look amazing or what? Mm-mm-mm. Okay, we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese. And I have some fresh basil that I chopped up. A little bit for garnish. And that's it. Are you all ready for? Oh yeah. The taste. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Not that I don't love me some IKEA style meatballs, but when you can repurpose it to something fantastic like this spaghetti and meatballs, Mmm, it's gonna be good. Oh, right, uh, I'm gonna add some black pepper to it. Oh yeah, is it coarse grind? Uh, it's okay, coarse enough. Nice. A Little bit of that extra heat at the end. Let's get some of that spaghetti first. Oh, dude, it's hot. Uh, it's gonna burn my lips. Mm, one pot pasta, OPP, cooked just nicely as always, not mushy. If you like it mushy, no judgment here. Aha. All right, let's get into those meatballs. Some sauce, yes. Aha again, dude, yeah, yep. Something real nice about the pasta on its own and then digging into larger chunks of meat, these meatballs. Yeah, this is like a nice hearty meal. Flo, just know that me and the kids love you greatly for cooking so much, seemingly all the time, right, nonstop. And you feed us so well. So if there's anything that you can do to get more mileage out of the effort that you put into cooking, then all the better. And this is like, hey, this is so good. Thanks, dude. If you're using frozen meatballs, don't worry about it. The pressure cooker will just take longer to come up to pressure, but the cook time remains the same. 
And again, you guys, if there are any ingredients I use today that you don't like or don't wanna use, just omit it. It's not gonna make a huge difference to spill. Well, it is gonna make a huge difference. If you don't like it, don't put it in. For the meatball recipe, check it out and I will see you over there.